Oh, for many years, Nintendo fans lived in harmony. That's such a load of bullshit, actually. And then everything... I was just gonna do some cheesy avatars like long ago. Four nations lived together in harmony, but then everything changed when the pandemic attacked. Something about Nintendo and Nintendo Directs, and when the world needed the most, they vanished until today. Hello, how are you guys? Super Mario T. Missed y'all. Been forever. How are you doing? Hope you're doing good. Hope you're healthy. Hope you're being happy. Staying hydrated. Wearing masks. Being safe. All that good stuff. The other good stuff, though. Yesterday, because I'm going to upload this the morning of the Direct. Nintendo announced this morning by the time I'm recording, the 16th that they're doing a direct tomorrow, which is this afternoon, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, 50 minutes long. They emphasize Smash Brothers. Sakurai retweeted about it. This is a huge ass deal. <laughs> um, oh my God, I'm gonna ramble for a couple minutes before I get to the predictions because I need to emphasize, I gotta emphasize with you guys, this is ridiculously huge in several different ways because, oh my God, it's been ages. I don't know if I said this already, but oh my god, it has literally been ages since I uploaded something. Ha ha! Shitty job of being consistent with my channel, but that's besides the point. It's been forever since we got a direct. Like a regular general direct, like half hour, 40 minutes long, packed with general first party and third party announcements. The last time we got a direct like that was 2019. September 4th, I think, 2019. 530 days ago, almost an entire year and a half ago, we had a general direct. We had mini directs throughout 2020. So we had like some stuff, but a majority of them were like direct minis, partner showcases. A lot of it was just like on average, like half a dozen to a dozen third party announcements. And a majority of which were game announcements. A lot of people did not care about. I think Shin Megami Tensei 5 is the only one I can think of off the top of my head. There was the Kingdom Hearts one on Switch too, but like there was not a lot. Mario had a direct. There was a Mario themed direct last September for Mario's 35th anniversary. Still technically in Mario 35th anniversary territory according to Nintendo right now. But like you know that's not going to be a general direct where you have a bunch of different first party Nintendo games alongside third parties that like everyone's going to watch. Your average Nintendo fan's not going to sit there and watch through a mini partner showcase. They have their own spotlight, which is nice, but like, yeah, it's been ages since we had a normal direct like this. And Nintendo did not shy away from just dropping reveals out of the blue, shadow dropping trailers one after another. Last spring, Paper Mario the Origami King, they just randomly said, here's a Paper Mario game coming in two months. Pikmin 3 Deluxe, they released the trailer announcing that. I think it was like two to three-ish months for that one. And the Mario 35th Anniversary Direct, they announced Mario 3D All-Stars, the pack, the 3D Mario game collection. Two weeks before that came out, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, they announced that, I think, like, two months before it came out. Like, when you combine all the first-party stuff they just announced on their own with the Direct Mini Showcases, they had the material to make a regular Direct at least once in 2020. But I think we all know, like, the pandemic affected them to a degree to where they couldn't, like, announce stuff effectively. I don't know if it was necessarily development. Because, like, everyone, like... Because, like, with the pandemic, that's a whole interesting thing. Because everyone was like, yo, N Nintendo got hit hard with the pandemic. How dare you expect a direct being selfish, hasty, greedy, whatever the case, right? But, like, Nintendo still made games and released games in 2020. Xenoblade, Animal Crossing... Hyrule Warriors again, like, their competition, a lot of companies were still making games. They were affected by the pandemic in some form or capacity, don't get me wrong. It didn't stop them from both developing games and when other companies did a lot more than what Nintendo did. Because, like, Sony and Microsoft, they still made games and they kickstarted entire new console generations. So, like, it, it wasn't that hard to see why people were, like, craving or starving for a regular direct when everyone else was basically like doing their own sort of thing and nintendo still had games to announce and release in 2020 i do think the pandemic just affected how much and when specifically they were going to announce these kinds of things so they just shadow dropped trailers for a lot of them as a compromise which is like it's cool because you it's a surprise the day of 
but it's just this constant wait of not knowing when the hell we're going to get information. It was like that throughout 2020. We didn't know what Nintendo was going to do for most of that year. We got like a decent chunk of knowing what they were going to do and what games we got. Largely in the second half with like Animal Crossing and Xenoblade in the first. So now we actually have an announcement of a direct coming after a year and a half. Basically, almost a year and a half anyways. And it's just a completely different vibe and energy from how it was throughout 2020. Because, like, now, even worst case scenario, there's, like, nothing good in this direct, which I highly doubt. There's at least going to be something good. At least one thing for everyone. I hope. I hope. But now we have stuff to look forward to. The fact that we know there's a direct. The fact that there's a big direct coming after so long. The fact that it's 50 minutes long. It's just, like... That, like, all of this makes sense as to why it's such a huge deal. That, and Nintendo has to know expectations are going to be through the roof for this one. Because it's been forever. Because it's 50 minutes long, not even 40 or 30. It's going to be roughly 50. That's almost an hour. That's a shit ton of time for them to just shove in as many game announcements as they want. First or third party. And, when they release the stream, they have a stream for this. For people to wait and be prepared for when it comes up. There's already There were already 10,000 people within the first few hours just sitting on that stream. Like, this has potential to be one of the most watched directs in history, one of the most popular, because it's been that long since we got a regular, like, general, big, meaty Nintendo Direct. This is hype. <laughs> this is really, really freaking cool. And, I, and another thing about it, too, is outside a couple things here and there, what the hell is there to even expect outside, like, three different things I can think of off the top of my head, there's, like, not a lot. Because <laughs> we did a lot of the Mario stuff the past six months. There could still be some Mario stuff in there. There's Zelda stuff in there. They they specifically emphasize Smash Brothers. They didn't specifically say a character. I, I expect a character either way. And, like, what about other first parties? Are they going to, like, give treatment to, like, any, like, stagnant dead ips is xenoblade x gonna get ported to switch are they gonna do anything with f-zero donkey kong what have you what about other third parties there are some there are some games that were still gonna come out for 2021 uh yeast 9 smt5 there is stuff to expect and be like oh yeah that seems like a decent shot but with 50 minutes it's really hard to specifically pinpoint like half of what this thing's gonna be about unless they grab like one or two big games and just make that take up like a quarter of the the whole thing you know so it's really tricky to say where they're gonna go with this but that's the fun of it because there's little to go off of not little little but not a lot to go off of that makes it fun to speculate and guess what they're gonna do so enough filler i'm gonna throw my discussions since they emphasize smash specifically i'm gonna throw that and i'm gonna throw my hat in there really quickly i don't think it's just gonna be a character reveal I, I do fully expect a character reveal in this direct, but they specifically emphasize Smash Brothers. Whenever they specified they were going to announce a brand new character, it was specifically them saying it was a brand new character. Almost every time, unless I'm mistaking like one or two instances, because they announced a direct and said Smash is going to be there. They didn't say a character. So that makes me think it's going to be more than just a character, maybe two characters for all I know, but... There's at least three things I could think of as to what those separate, like, extra things for Smash could be. The first one I could think of is, like, maybe quality of life stuff, because you know how they dropped Small Battlefield, and they said, hey, now you have the option to pick between Smash music or every song for the Battlefield in FD. Like, I don't know what kind of quality of life changed specifically, but, like, something small, something a lot of people aren't going to care that much, but Sakurai's going to be, like... Oh, we decided to do this because we felt like it and like to give people the option to do so. Like that sort of thing, right? Something like that. Some kind of quality of life change. The second thing I can think of is like some kind of mode or some big change to a pre-existing mode of some kind. I don't know. This kind of falls in the quality of life change. I don't think about it. Actually, yeah. Speaking of small battlefield, there are some stages that are not in Ultimate that were in other Smash games. Like Smash Ultimate bought back over 90% of every stage throughout the entire Smash series. But there's like 15 missing Rainbow Road from the 3DS version, Pack Maze, Mute City, Melee, Sector Z, Planet Zebits, etc. Like, maybe they could announce, like, a couple of those stages are coming back. Rainbow Road, Mute City, Poke Floats, please. That'd be sick. That's one possibility. Maybe they could add, like, extra music for franchises in Smash Brothers. Or 
Oh god, what was the other thing? Or an Echo Pass, too. S a separate DLC. They create Echo Fighters for, like, a cheaper price. Like, three, five characters based off pre-existing characters in Smash. You can make a Shadow Echo. Or, like, Dunban as a Shulk Echo. Like, that sort of thing, right? Something like that. Like, either or would be sick as hell, in their own special way, at least. But, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna make the bold claim. Because they emphasize Smash Brothers and not a character specifically, I'm gonna go off on a limb and say they're gonna announce a third Fighter's Pass. Because, like, Sakurai emphasized at, one, at some point, if Nintendo walks up and asks him to make more characters, he wouldn't mind doing it. Smash is basically his baby. He's gonna, like, constantly, like, go after it time and time again. He loves to joke about how he's overworked, he never gets a break, all that stuff. He deserves it, for sure. But, it's like, Sak Sakurai's a perfectionist. We all know he's a perfectionist. He's gonna keep pushing himself. He's gonna keep trying to, like, make the better, the best thing possible that supersedes his previous project. He did this with Smash, he's done this with Kirby. Like, for as much as Sakurai can joke about it, I can totally see Sakurai just still keep pushing to make more characters, even though, like, and even then, like, DLC isn't as taxing as making a whole new Smash game from the ground up. It still seems like a Sakurai thing to do to just keep going. Not, it's not even just, like, greed being like, I need more characters, I need more, I want a hundred, even though it would be cool. And I'm already really satisfied with Ultimate rosters as is, but don't put it past Sakurai to just stop altogether when he, when he feels like he can keep going and surpass his own limits. Because that is what the man does. He does that with a lot of the games he makes. And if it's a Nintendo thing to where they want Smash to keep being the main platform for the Switch, to where they keep getting a bunch of easy-ass money for millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people around the world, definitely don't put it past Nintendo to keep asking Sakurai for more characters. That's that's the easier one. That's the easier expectation, right? But I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go with that claim. We're not just going to get a character. I think they're going to announce a third fighter's pass. Beyond that though, as far as the character goes, if you guys saw any of my past Smash videos, especially within the past few months-ish, Sephiroth, Steve, etc., somewhere around there, well, I, actually if you follow me on Twitter too, you know exactly what I'm going to say too. Between one of two characters, could get both, could get one, then the other gets announced later, vice versa. I, 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 <laughs> Crash Bandicoot though, I don't even think you have to explain because like, he's relevant history as a rival against Nintendo and Sega, Mario, and Sonic. Iconic gaming icon, popular games, the remaster trilogy sold really good, Crash 4 came out like several months ago, it's coming out on Switch and PS5 and the new Xbox next month, heavily relevant, heavily popular, like all the cards are basically in this guy's favor, I don't even think I have to explain why I think Crash is a safe bet, but like now seems like a really good time for that. So Crash... That's one possibility. That Crash is the safe possibility. The other one that's a little bit, a little bit more crazy, not that crazy, because a lot of people are expecting this too, if you've seen Twitter. And if you saw my videos after Sephiroth, where I'm talking about the character and then like, oh, you could add this character next, because I mean, you know, Dr. Eggman though, <laughs> that would be the sickest newcomer edition, for me at least, other than Waluigi and Shadow, because I think at this point I want Eggman just as much as Shadow the Hedgehog, but Eggman is like significantly more realistic. As far as iconography goes, Eggman. Like you have a lot of villains in Smash already. Smash Ultimate has had this theme of adding various villains. Bowser, Ganon, Ridley, Newcomer, King K. Rool, Dark Samus, now Sephiroth, who's like the first DLC villain and the first third party villain and the first character from a third party franchise that's already in Smash to have a second character with a unique moveset, i.e. not Richter or Ken, it just opens the door for Eggman to just walk on in and say, hey, why'd you start the party without me? Because like, you think of gaming's most iconic villains, you think Bowser, you think Sephiroth, you think Ridley, most people think Eggman, bro. Like, even, even when Sonic's not doing as hot game-wise, game-wise at least when Sonic's not doing as hot, Sonic is still immensely popular, and is still a really popular icon. Like, you can't undersell him or the characters, and Eggman's debatably just as iconic as Sonic, because he's been there since the first game. He's Sonic's arch enemy. Mechanics go, like, moveset-wise, you have a lot of potential between the various badniks he makes, a lot of weapons, various mechs he controls, a lot of the giant robots, Final Smashes, Death Egg Robot, Egg Dragoon, 
You could just give him the Egg Walker from SA2, rip him out straight from that game into Smash Brothers. Like, there's a shit ton of potential you could do with Eggman for a moveset because he has so much to work with. Like, a ridiculous amount. Egg Eggman would be hype. Eggman would be super freaking sick. But that's primarily, like, catching more mainstream because of what Sephiroth did, which is still cool. But, hmm, that only depends whether or not Nintendo walked up to Sakurai and asked him for Eggman, or, like, if they said yes on Sephiroth and they considered all the other villains in Smash already, they pondered the idea of Eggman, because, like, Eggman's basically the last major villain in all of gaming missing in Smash Brothers. That in Smash Brothers is, like, a whole celebration of gaming itself. So Eggman would fit the bill just fine. So, Crash safe pick, Eggman slightly crazier. I'm probably gonna bet on on Crash if we get one or the other. It's still gonna be really sick. If we get someone else, okay. If we get both though, hello. If we get Shadow though, hello. If we get Waluigi though, I'm expecting him to be the last character. He's the last one. But that's, I think that's it for the Smash Brothers stuff. Now it's kind of like free roam. Because 50 minutes, again, that's a lot of time to cover a lot of first party stuff. I think one thing a lot of us can agree though, there's at least going to be some Mario thing. At least one Mario thing at this Direct. I don't know what the hell it could be. There's there's three to four different things I could think of off the top of my head. The safest bet I could think of is Mario Golf, a Mario sports game. Because, like, Mario Tennis and Mario Golf have been the most consistent sports games for the longest time. We've had one on almost every single Nintendo system, basically. Mario Baseball and Strikers had two games on GameCube and Wii, respectively. So, we have Tennis on Switch already, Mario Tennis Aces, so you would think Golf would come next. That's just logic at that point. That said, though, I don't think Next Level Games would finish a Mario Strikers this soon. Because they just finished Luigi's Mansion 3, like, a year ago. Although Mario Strikers isn't that complicated of a game to make to begin with. Either way, if we were to get one of the other two, I would die for Strikers, by the way. Strikers is my favorite Mario sportsman off, but I feel like baseball could still be on the table. Because that's usually made by Bandai Namco, and their studios are massive and spread out so far, they make, like, dozens of games at once. A Mario baseball game would not be that far off. Either that or Nintendo could just make it in-house. They could do that for Strikers too. But Mario Golf's a safe bet. Probably, as far as mainline games go, we had like all that Mario stuff throughout the past several months with the 30th anniversary. 3D World plus Bowser's Fury just came out. I would flip my shit if they ended this whole direct on a teaser for Odyssey 2. Pulling a Breath of the Wild 2 and be like, the sequel to Super Mario Odyssey is now in development. Which is like, if it, if that's the starting point, like what Breath of the Wild 2 was back in 2019, that makes a whole lot of sense. Because like, I don't, I, I feel like they're going to make another 3D Mario for the Switch. Given we're like, barely halfway through its life, there's still a lot of years left on its life cycle. Like, we have a lot of Mario games as is on the Switch. But I feel like they would want to make another one, pull a Galaxy 2 basically. I already went over, like, why I think it's likely. I think I made it, yeah, what, what I want is Super Mario Odyssey 2, and I started that video with why I think it's, like, it's even more likely. Especially now that they finished 3D World, because, like, you gotta think there's some reason why Bowser's Fury came out as the way it is, because, like, that whole, that entire mode is literally designed as if it was ripped straight from Odyssey. Animations, the shine gets, the size of the world itself, like, it's... Very, 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 very Odyssey. Like, it's the Odyssey DLC we never got. It's the Odyssey DLC we never got. It's just in a completely different 3D Mario. Not completely different, but it's in the most linear 3D Mario if you discount 3D Land. But you get, you, you, you basically get what I'm saying with that. I, I expect Mario Golf from this. If they somehow throw Odyssey 2 at the very end, like a teaser or something. I think I predicted this in the Mario 35th Anniversary Direct 2. Yeah, I did. I did, but we got 3D All-Stars, and that had, at least has precedent with how long the rumors lasted throughout most of 2020. With Odyssey 2, though, that would be a sick surprise. Although, I really hope Nintendo kind of gives a shit about Mario and Luigi. Like, uh, yeah, so it's like, oh, he's still salty about the whole Mario and Luigi thing. God damn, let it rest, but it's like Mario RPGs are basically dead right now. Oh! Oh, it just hit me. It just hit me. Okay, Mario and Luigi. That would be sick. I'm gonna make a... You know what? Okay, Mario Golf and a sequel to 
to Mario plus Rabbids. I think Mario plus Rabbids could still be on the table for a sequel. Because that game, it did really well. It is a really good game. There's a lot more potential they could do with that whole crossover aspect that they just barely scratched the surface of the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg. Ubisoft did really good with that game, design-wise, mechanics-wise, sales-wise. Like, Miyamoto loved it too, apparently, and it, it, it's like one of the best-selling third parties on the Switch too. Mario plus Rabbids could definitely warrant a sequel, and that would make for a genuinely good surprise. That, that's my second bold one, Mario plus Rabbids getting a sequel. That would be sick, and I'm also expecting Mario Golf. If we, some, if we somehow get Odyssey 2, though. Mm, and if we get learned the Virginity, I don't know. <laughs> but other than that, I think the other big, 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 big thing most people are expecting from this direct is Zelda, too. Because we're leaving Mario 35th anniversary territory. We're literally about to approach Zelda's 35th anniversary territory, too. With a direct as big as this, and with how long it's been since they revealed Breath of the Wild 2. Now this seems very likely to actually get more information on Breath of the Wild 2. I don't know if they're going to release it this year per se, or save it for next year, but I feel like they're going to tease something Breath of the Wild 2 related. Like, it feels like a good time for them to just say, okay, development's going along smoothly, we're working on the game, here's some new stuff in it that you can do that you can't do in the first game, at least a little bit of a tease. Because I don't think they're going to take that long on Breath of the Wild 2 if they're reusing the same exact engine and assets from the first game. Like, they're pulling a Galaxy 2 with Breath of the Wild, basically. And Galaxy 2 did not take, like, three years to make. It took, like, two and a half-ish. I'm not saying it's going to take the same amount of time for Breath of the Wild 2, because that's, like, a vastly much bigger game. But, like, given how many delays the first game went through, I highly doubt it's going to take as long to try and finish that compared to the first game, you know? I think it went through, like, four delays. It was delayed for, like, six-ish six years? Five years? Somewhere around there? I forget. It was delayed for a good while. Either way, I, I actually do kind of expect Breath of the Wild 2 something, like some kind of extra tidbit or tease or trailer or whatever. Something. Something Breath of the Wild 2. I do at least expect Skyward Sword HD. Skyward Sword HD is probably like the bare minimum expectation for Zelda's 35th. Because like, out of all the Zelda games they remastered or remade, that's the only one that didn't get some kind of remaster slash remake. Ocarina of Time and Jor's Mask got the 3D remake, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, HD, re-releases. Skyward Sword, I'm like 100% positive it's going to get that eventually if it's not this year. I think that's probably the safest bet, do like gyro controls, even though it's not as good as the Wii. They still gave gyro controls to Mario 3D World and Mario Galaxy and 3D All-Stars. They could make a Zelda 3D All-Stars as well, just shove in like up original ports of Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, like what they did with Mario 64, slightly buffed assets, but it looks largely the same, not widescreen. It's not going to be widescreen, let's be honest, because <laughs> you look at Mario 64, and then they just grab Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD from Wii U, slap it on the box, Zelda 3D All-Stars, limited for six months. If they do do 3D All-Stars for Zelda, I fully expect that to be a limited release too assuming they don't pull back the limited release thing on Mario 3D All-Stars. Which, it's dumb. It's completely dumb. I don't get why they do it at all. But th if they do it for Zelda, it's probably going to be the same exact thing. Either way, I think Skyward Sword seems like a safe bet. Skyward Sword HD. And I do expect something Breath of the Wild 2 related. At least something. And I could see if they announce, if they reveal more about Breath of the Wild 2, I could see that taking up a lot more from the Direct itself. I can't think of a lot Zelda-wise, because I haven't played a lot of the games and I need to change that, like, ASAP. Okay, here's a bold one. Retro Studios has been, like, I mean, Retro Studios is working on Metroid Prime 4. We all know that, because, like, the Metroid Prime 4 was going through development, and then, like, a, a few years ago... They just scrapped development altogether because it wasn't doing that well. They restarted it, and then they emphasized how Metroid Prime 4 is being developed by Retro Studios now. Like, I don't think Retro has been just sitting idly by between, like, a year and a half to two years ago. Between then and when Tropical Freeze came out in 2014, there, I, I highly doubt they were just sitting and doing practically nothing or, like, barely much of anything. So... I expect a new Donkey Kong game, because it's been forever since we got a new one, 
Tropical Freeze came out seven? Seven years ago. It came out seven years ago. It's still a long time for a new Donkey Kong game. A new Donkey Kong game would definitely hit different right now. It would be really sick, especially if King K. Rool makes a comeback, and if it's Retro Studios making it, then you know damn well it's going to be a really good platformer. New Donkey Kong game? I would totally be on board. Especially since my friends show me how good Tropical Freeze is. Okay, so Zelda, we knew we we had no indication of when Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 was gonna have extra info released. Now this makes more sense, but I can't say the same for Metroid Prime 4. I still feel like that's like a long ways off. I doubt we're gonna get a teaser for much of anything. Uh <laughs> I feel like we're at least another year away from when we're gonna get anything Metroid Prime 4 related. I think the same case could be said for Bayo 3. Well, actually, well, ba I mean, I forget specifically what he said, but he basically said something along the lines of just forget that, like, we're developing it, so you'll be surprised. That makes me think they're going to reveal something towards the end of the year, but that it's not going to come out this year. I don't know. I don't I don't feel that hopeful for either Bayo 3 or Metroid Prime 4, if I'm going to be 100% honest, which is, kind, which is kind of a shame, but that's basically how I feel. I could be wrong though, it's just predictions. Um, a new Kirby game makes a lot of sense right now actually. Star Allies came out three years ago? Almost three years ago? Almost three years ago, okay, it wasn't that off. Almost three years ago, had DLC and whatnot. Uh, you had like smaller titles, what was it? Super Kirby Fighters or 2, Kirby Clash 2. Don't kill me if I get these names wrong. I don't. I have not kept track of a lot of these games in a good while, so I, I'm, I'm rusty on some of this knowledge. But it's been forever since we got a new Kirby. Not forever, but it's been a while since we got Kirby stuff. Now feels like a decent time to get something Kirby related. Eh, it seems like a safe bet. I don't think it'd be that far out of left field if they threw something Pokemon related in here too. Because Pokemon's 35th is coming up soon, too. Bo Pokemon Company and Game Freak like to do their own presentation, their own little directs and whatnot. Which, they could they could definitely still do their own thing like a week or two from now. Because I think next, yeah, next week's, yeah, actually, no, I, I kind of take that. Uh, yeah, I take that back. We're not going to get Pokemon stuff this direct. I think they're going to save it for when Pokemon Day comes. Because that's like next week. You know what would be really sick, though? Either... The one thing a lot of Nintendo fans like to say is F-Zero make it a comeback in some form, or a w new Wario action adventure game, or just a new Wario game, period. F-Zero is kind of an obvious one, because like that's been MIA for God knows how long. Its main series now is basically Smash Brothers. Thank you, Captain Falcon. <laughs> but yeah, a new F-Zero would be sick. I've always wanted a beat-em-up game, an F-Zero beat-em-up, where Captain Falcon just beats the ever-loving shit out of people. Like... Because he is supposed to be a bounty hunter, so that would be sick. And you do some combo with Falcon Punch, like that, like about F Zero beat him up game. Please, Nintendo, that'd be sick. Wario, though, you think WarioWare would have been on the Switch by this point? Because WarioWare Gold, that was like the 3DS's swan song three years ago ish. Yeah, WarioWare did not get a new game since like the Wii U. Wario Land didn't get a new game since the Wii. Wario, I feel like Wario could definitely deserve some kind of brand new game at this point. And they're usually made by Intelligent Systems, and they finished Paper Mario several months ago. They finished Fire Emblem even sooner than that. So, a Wario game, whether WarioWare or Wario Land would be cool. I'd kind of prefer Wario Land. Those games interest me a lot more than WarioWare, though I do hear WarioWare is fun. That and WarioWare is apparently really huge in Japan. So a Wario game doesn't seem that far out of left field either. This one's the pipe dream. This one's the pipe dream. Kid Icarus Port, Uprising Port on Switch. For the love of God, give that series something. Give it something, Nintendo. Please give it something. Like, I keep saying this. Uprising, literally the best 3DS game. It's only major flaw. It's control scheme. How do you fix it? Remap certain buttons on a pro controller or the Joy-Cons. Bada bing, bada boom. You have gyro controls. You have two control sticks, one for aiming, one for moving like you could definitely make uprising work on the switch make grez let grezzo remake it please let grezzo remake it that'd be so sick like oh oh my god uh, and i mentioned this once before on twitter too i'm probably wrong about this i've been wrong about this numerous times about a kid Icarus uprising like hd port but like humor me for two minutes pretending like it is gonna happen right because i i've had people tell me that like like it has 
like Sakurai has to be the one to make it, it's Sakurai's baby, and like both of those sentiments are completely not true, it's still a Nintendo IP, Sakurai's literally not made a Kirby game in like 15 years, HAL Laboratory handles that, Sakurai doesn't own HAL, Nintendo has all the rights to Kirby, same with Kid Icarus, same with Smash Brothers, it's just Sakurai literally develops the Smash Brothers games. Like, I would imagine they'd ask Sakurai to be like, hey, is it okay if we remake it? But you don't need Sakurai to port or remake Kid Icarus Uprising. Like, you see how good Grezzo remakes a lot of the Zelda games and Luigi's Mansion on 3DS? They could literally do the same thing with Uprising, and I kind of want Grezzo to remake Uprising for the Switch. I think they got what it takes, and I think it could be so, so good, and it would give that franchise an actual legitimate shot at getting an actual life ahead of it. Because it, it sold modestly on 3DS, but like that's not good enough for it to get like extra games sooner and sooner, you know? Which is unfortunate, because Uprising literally is such a good game. That said though, I'm gonna, I'm gonna segue this into another series. People like to throw the idea of a Warriors game, like Mario Warriors, Kirby Warriors, etc. I feel like Kid Icarus Warriors would probably fit the most, given the state that franchise is in, also with the kind of characters and enemies you fight on a constant basis throughout that game so there's that but when people think warriors of x franchise people think xenoblade and that would be cool i'd rather kid icarus first but xenoblade makes just as much sense speaking of xenoblade though i do kind of expect a chronicles export because you have you have the first and second games on switch a lot of wii u games got ported to switch there's not a lot left on that thing that the switch quote unquote needs Xenoblade X is one of the few games I could think of. Yoshi's Woolly World 2, but Xenoblade Chronicles X is the main one that I could think of that the Switch could definitely use as far as Wii U ports go. Because we got Mario 3D World ported, we got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, we got Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Pikmin 3, Wonderful 101 got ported to the Switch too. Like, Xenoblade Chronicles X definitely makes a lot of sense in that regard. I, I think it, a port of X makes a lot of sense. It's not a new game, but it's a safe port bet. Oh, you want a bold one? Here's a bold one. What if we get an ARMS sequel announced in this? Like, think about it for a second, right? ARMS, when it came out, it was received very well. It sold very well. It sold like two and a half million units at this point. That's like, that's good for a brand new franchise, especially. Like, that's usually how much the Fire Emblem games sell when they're like good games too. Or like since Awakening, at least. I know Three Houses passed that, but like ARMS, new IP, new franchise for Nintendo. Two million, that's good. And this, the, the reception from the game is still generally really good. Then you have Min Min and Smash Brothers. That franchise basically got like a giant advertisement right there. Them announcing a sequel for ARMS would do gangbusters, and it could help that series flourish a lot more too. It has its fan base, it has its dedicated fans like any other game out there. You could fix some of the problems of like the, of like trying to grind for all the different ARMS. You could add a bunch of more characters to the mix. For all we know, they could probably like replace Min, like replace Springman as the main character, quote unquote, for Min Min. I know Yabuki said something like, "Oh, everyone," or Sakurai said like, "Oh, everyone's their main character in Arms." We all know Springman's literally the poster boy of the whole game. We all we all saw Springman as like the main main character in the game. Min Min was the most popular, and Yabuki specifically asked for Min Min. Like that's kind of the main thing. That said, though. Min Min being in Smash could definitely like push her to become the poster girl for the series instead because she's a popular character and because Smash is a big advertising campaign in its own special way it could inherently promote ARMS too if they were developing a brand new one and that game finished up development like over three years ago too like DLC finished what towards the end of 2017 early 2018 so there was ample time to make a sequel or follow up to that game like it feels like a good time for them to follow up on that series especially since they had high hopes for it this would be a good like second chance you got me stumped with a lot of third party stuff too i could imagine shimigami tensei 5 being thrown in here somewhere and there's probably a decent chunk of third party stuff i didn't even mention like persona 5 strikers comes out really soon doesn't it so they might they might shove that in there somewhere too yeah they could probably shove persona 5 strikers if they announce persona 5 coming to switch though Actually, you know what? I'm, let's let's do it. I'm going with that. They're gonna announce Persona 5 coming to Switch. It's it's dumb. I know. 
like everyone's like, oh, Joker's in Smash Brothers, then I guess it's time we get Persona 5 on the Switch. Nah, you get a cute, you get a spin-off series on 3DS. You get a Musou game with Persona characters, which is serving as like a direct sequel to the actual game itself on the Switch, even though you don't have the original game. Like, it makes logical sense why you'd have the Persona 5 on there at all. So, it, with its strikers here, I'm gonna make the bold claim and say they're gonna announce that they're throwing the Persona 5 on Switch too. I'm probably 100% wrong, cause like, it's been, like, they had ample, ample time to port Persona 5 on the Switch. And they were only like, recently shocked with how good Persona 4 is, like Atlas, Atlas for some reason is super ignorant with how badly people want Persona games on other systems. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh? It's like I, it's it's like it's, it's like that sponge it's like that SpongeBob episode too where he, he wasn't oh my god the striped sweater he was singing about the striped sweater and then like once he finally started cooking the patties every the guys were like hey finally that's what we've been waiting for it's like that it's literally like that episode that's the best way I could describe Atlas with this whole Persona fiasco which they now know they now have parameters to know. How badly people want Persona on Switch and other systems. So now they could do that with P5 on Switch. There you go. Yeah, it's hard. Third party stuff, it's kind of hard. I can't think of anything else, to be honest. I do expect this direct to actually be really good. Because of how long it's going to be. And the amount of potential they have for all these kinds of various announcements. This is going to be... Oh, this is going to be such a good direct. I hope it's a good one. I feel like it is, though. Because it's been forever... Nintendo knows how long people have been clamoring for one general direct with a bunch of announcements in it. They know expectations are going to be through the roof. They're specifically telling us we have games in 2021 prepared that we're going to show you in a full-fledged, classic, traditional direct that we never did throughout 2020, where you just had to hope and pray that we would say something or just shadow drop a trailer months later instead. This is nice. Th this, this new vibe, this new, like, feeling... It's not new. It's 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 the same but different, as Leaf would say in Bug Fables. Play Bug Fables. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited. Like my hype, my hype when I heard about this, it's like probably sitting at like a nice, comfortable nine. It's not like a ten because like there's always the chance that it's not gonna it's not gonna go as smoothly or as well, you know? Alongside the fact that like there's some parts where like, oh you could kind of expect this or that, but there's other parts to where I'm just like, I don't know what to expect from this, because like 50 minutes is a long ass time. They must have like a good chunk of variety that we may not expect if they have that much time to fill. Especially when this is the first direct in in almost a year and a half, over five hundred days ago. So I'm definitely looking forward to this direct. Are you guys looking forward to it? What about you? What are your expectations? Do any of what I said vibe with you guys at all? If not, that's fine. It's a predictions video. It's just one dude spewing trash on the internet. Always remember that. But some of you like my trash though. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Some of you guys value what I said, which is like, oh, that's kind of dope. But like, don't forget, I'm literally just like the same kind of Nintendo fan like you. It's just like, oh, I kind of want a Nintendo game. I hope it's good. That's basically it. <laughs> Do you agree with any of my predictions? Give me your predictions down below. Do you have any, like, out there, wild, zany, odd, weird predictions you got for this direct? Let me know down below. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys when I give my reaction and a follow-up discussion on the whole thing. I'm gonna react to it with a couple of mates, a couple of my Twitter slash Smash Crew Discord mates. We all either mean or like Min Min or both. It's literally a Min Min Discord. I'm not even kidding. Not even like the character Discord, but like. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be watching it with several mates on Discord. So look out for that reaction. Look out for a follow-up discussion. Hopefully I'm gonna use this as a springboard to actually get back into making videos again. Cause like I've kind of been taking it easy a lot of the time, but I also kinda wanna like upgrade some of the presentation on my channel, make it at least seem slightly more professional. If you catch my drift end cards, logos, transitions, better editing. I swapped editor software. I'm not using VideoPad anymore. God, that thing's been such a pain in my ass over the past seven years. I'm trying to learn DaVinci Resolve. That's why videos have been slow. It's between that and I've largely just been taking it easy since the new year started. Now this is giving me motivation to actually like 
pick up the pace with improving my presentation. I also plan on making like a whole stream layout too. Like, like, like better presentation, making myself seem more professional, like visually, the channel at least. That's why I've been like MIA a lot of the time. Between that and taking it easy. So that at least like largely answers why I've barely uploaded much of anything since the new year began. Either way, see you guys for when the direct drops. And after the fact, stay safe, stay hydrated, wear a mask, and stay super.